class soon. Uh, today we have two hours lecture. Okay, I mentioned on Monday uh, I will discuss the tutorial question with you during the lecture class. Okay, uh, I'm not going to do it today uh, because I see that uh, uh, I can uh, discuss next Monday during lecture class. Okay, today uh, Wednesday lecture class, I want to cover uh, the topic that I have uh, uh, start uh, on Monday. Okay, I want to continue today and try to finish. Okay, not to finish all, but try to cover almost uh, all the topic. Okay, uh, the, the new topic that I have covered this week. Okay, so that next week, uh, Monday and Wednesday, not Wednesday, next week, Monday. Monday, you have another tutorial class. Okay, uh, you can try the tutorial five. Okay, there will be another tutorial five. And the discussions of the solutions for tutorial four, I will discuss with you during the lecture class on Monday, the one hour. Okay, so means that next week, Monday, there will be two hours tutorial. Okay, uh, the only difference is uh, uh, the one hour lecture class, I use it for tutorial, but this tutorial is for all. Okay, tutorial is for all. Okay, I will start class now. Okay, the today to uh lecture class. Okay, uh, I will continue with capacitance. Okay, Monday I have a cover about uh, resistance. Okay, uh, this uh, resistance and capacitance, all these uh, are some of the uh, um, parasitic effect, okay, uh, that is uh, caused by the interconnect, okay. Uh, this uh, capacitance is still under the chapter 8, uh, interconnect okay uh, I have mentioned to you before interconnect is the wire or the metal layer okay uh, all the metal layers they has their own uh, resistance and the capacitance okay and uh, resistance uh, they are different source of resistance okay uh, the resistance is from the drain source and then uh, the contact and the wire okay and then uh, now uh, today, I will further discuss on capacitance. What is capacitance? Okay, all of you, you know what is mean by capacitance. Okay, um, as you see here, this capacitance refers to the wire capacitance, okay, parallel plate capacitance, and fringing capacitance. Okay, so wire capacitance, uh, Later, you will know how to determine the wire capacitance. And what is it? Uh, the parallel plate capacitance and fringing capacitance. Later, uh, it will be shown to you. Okay, with the most structure diagram. Okay, uh, of how do we uh, know and determine the parallel plate capacitance and fringing capacitance. Okay, first, I will cover on the wire capacitance. The wire capacitance depends upon the length and the width of the connecting wire. 
Okay, it is a function of the fence out from the driving gate and the numbers of the fence up gate. Okay, uh, this is actually means that uh, if we have more than one inverter, okay, for example, Okay, if we have one more than one inverter. Okay, this is inverter. Okay, and then at the output, this inverter will drive. Okay another inverter okay this output of the first inverter will drive the second inverter okay second inverter can be multiple inverter okay so the numbers of fan sub gate is mean by this fan sub gate okay all these inverter the gate here are uh, drive by this driving gate. The first inverter we call it as the driving gate. Okay, so uh, wire capacitance here is determined based on this, and then we look into the, here the diagram. There is a wire. Okay, this is the wire. Okay, this you see here, this is wire. Okay, this is also wire. Okay, remember, uh, if, if you can recall, okay, uh, I have mentioned before, at the output of the inverter, there is actually a load capacitance. Okay, sometimes you call it as a output capacitance. Okay, load capacitance consists of wire capacitance. Okay, there are other capacitance like gate capacitance, uh, output capacitance. Okay, all these capacitance are part of load capacitance, and wire is one of it. Okay, wire capacitance is one of it. Okay, wire capacitance is growing in importance with the scalings of technology. Okay, why is that? A wiring, a wiring capacitance is growing. Uh, because when the feature size of a transistor getting smaller, okay, so the numbers of the wire used will be increased. Okay, it will be increased. Uh, and then the increased numbers of the wire, okay, depends on what is the width and length that is used. Okay, it can actually affect uh, the whole system. Okay, and um, there are some components here we call parallel plate capacitance fringing capacitance and interwire capacitance. Okay, so all this capacitance is actually uh, determined um, based on uh, two metal layer. Okay, uh, when they are placed close, close to each other, okay, uh, they will cause this uh, parallel plate capacitance and fringing capacitance. Okay, so later there are a few diagram that will show you uh, what is mean by all this. Okay, before I go to the parallel plate capacitance and fringing capacitance, okay, there are some of the fundamentals uh, knowledge here, which I want to uh, mention. Okay, uh, this I share to you because I uh, think that it will be useful to you, okay, that you can refer. Okay, uh, this is just a short additional notes. Okay, um, Okay, this one uh, is about the transistor as a switch. Okay, when a uh, on transistor, uh, it will pass a finite amount of current. Okay, it depends on terminal voltage. Okay, means the terminal voltage of the gate, source, and drain. Okay, uh, and then uh, the transistor has a capacitor. Okay, you see here transistor gate source, drain, or have capacitance. Okay, how to determine capacitance? Okay, this is the formula. The fundamental formula which we usually use to determine the capacitance 
by relating to the uh, charge. Okay, uh, charge or current. Okay, this one is current. Okay, not in charge. This is in current and then this is the potential difference over a period of time. Okay, potential difference over a period of time. Means that uh, when there is a current flow through the capacitance, the potential across the capacitance will be different. Okay, when it is uh, fully charged, then the uh, voltage of course will be high. Okay, so these are the formula. Uh, capacitance and current determine the speed. Okay, so you see here the speed capacitance and current determine the speed. Okay. Okay, since um, uh, we talked about the most structure, okay, most structures has gate, body, source and drain. Okay, but the diagram here I show you is only with gate and body. Okay, okay, why I want to show you this? Uh, 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 because I want to let you know that uh, what is happening between the gate and body. Okay, these additional notes. Okay, uh, uh, this is uh, only with gate and body. Okay, you see this is a polysilicon gate and this is body. Okay, in between gate and body, there is a silicon dioxide. This is an insulator. Okay, uh, the diagram here is without uh, drain and source. Okay, we, they are without drain and source. Okay, as you see here, these three are, op are in different operating mode. Okay, because they are with a different gate voltage. Okay, different gate voltage means the input voltage is different. Okay, so when the transistor is operate in different input voltage, then uh, the phenomenon that happens in the gate and the body will uh, you will see that the charge uh, the numbers of charge and uh, the how the charge is uh, um, positions uh, are different okay in different operating mode okay uh, this is a n most okay we call this as a most capacitor okay this is can uh, the, uh, we can call it as a most capacitor, and uh, there is a three operating mode. Before that, you learn about cutoff, saturations, and linear. Okay, uh, they are actually related. They are related. Okay, um, when we call cutoff, linear, and saturation, it is mean by the operations of that transistor. Okay, and then these accumulations, depletions, and inversions is also we call it operating mode, but this refer to the state of the charge of the carrier, okay, negative and positive carrier within the body, okay, and the gate. Okay, so for accumulation, okay, accumulations is when um the when these uh you see here the input voltage is low. Okay, when there is input voltage is low, okay, uh, this is uh, 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 the positive charge, there is a positive charge uh, in the body. Okay, this positive charge is due to that the body is a P-type. Okay, so there are more positive charge in the body. And then some of the negative carrier is accumulate, okay, uh, start to accumulate at the gate. Okay, and then there is no channel. Okay, there is no channel. Okay, and then uh, if the input voltage start to um, increase, can okay, mean increase to uh to start to increase, but uh above zero, below but below threshold voltage. Okay, there is a positive charge here. Okay, and then you see here uh there is a depletion region here. Okay, this is what we call depletion region. Okay, and then uh, when the input voltage increase to higher than the threshold voltage, there will be more positive carrier uh, at the gate. And then this positive carrier will attract the negative 
carrier okay uh towards the gate okay so here you see this is the negative carrier we call it as an inversion region okay so that's why this is uh, called as the inversion operating mode okay uh, so here uh, uh, the diagram here is to show you um, the negative and positive charge okay uh, um, and then how they cause uh, the uh, different operating mode of that transistor Okay, so um, for this one in inversion regions, get, there will be uh, currents that, if, that is flowing through. Okay, uh, when there is a channels in between the uh, source and drain, and then there will be currents that is flowing through from one, so, uh, one terminal to another terminal. Okay, charge is carried by the electron. Uh, carrier velocity is proportional to literal E field between source and drain. And uh, these statements uh, can be supported with the use of this formula. Okay. Um, and then uh, this electric field is related to this voltage. Okay. And then the length. Okay. The length can be a length of an object of a length of that particular um, region. Okay. Um, so this one you don't need to memorize or uh, to remember uh, no need to memorize okay just that, uh, uh, to show you for uh, knowledge only okay and then the time for carrier to cross channel also we can determine okay okay what I want to emphasize is on this one okay parallel plate capacitance okay uh, there is a most structures that is uh, given here Okay, the most uh, structures look like parallel plate capacitance, okay, while operating in inversion. Okay, remember just now in inversions operating mode, there are a negative charge that is accumulate, accumulated, okay, accumulated under the gate, okay, is in this region, okay, is in this region, the positive charge, uh, it's not positive, it's negative charge. Okay, negative charge is accumulated in this region. Okay, and positive charge at the gate. Okay, they attract each other. So we call it as a inversion. Okay, it is operating in inversion. Okay, uh, the, um, okay you can see here, uh, there is a capacitance here. Okay, there is a capacitance between the gate to the body. Okay, not only get to body, get to the source and get to the drain, also they are capacitant. Okay, um, here uh, to determine the parallel plate capacitant, uh, the formula used is this one. Okay, this one. Okay, uh, just, just now, uh, okay, just now there is a, uh, formula that relate the current to the capacitance. Okay, now there is another formula that relate the charge. Okay, this is the charge uh, at the channel. Okay, this is the charge that uh, that is relate to the capacitance and then the voltage. And then to calculate the parallel plate capacitance, okay, we can use this um, formula. This is the gate capacitance and equals the epsilon multiply with the width and length and divide by the thickness okay this is the thickness of, of the dioxide silicon dioxide and then width and length is given it is determined by the dimensions of the gate okay and then uh it, this formula can redefine to get this and it will be uh, the c or x w or uh, w multiply l okay this c or x is defined by this one okay uh, okay, so this is a formula, okay, uh, to how to get the parallel plate capacitance. And then the theory, okay, next, uh, there is uh, some theory here to explain, okay, but before that, okay, there is a uh, one figure, figure was 6.16, okay, this is an interconnect segment running parallel to the surface, which is used for parasitic resistance and capacitance estimation, okay. 
assume that this is a gate. Okay, assume this is gate and then this is the surface of the body. Okay, this is the surface of the body. Okay, uh, this is a gate, okay, or uh, uh, is a polysilicon layer. Okay, um, we also can assume it uh, not only the gate, but the wire segment that is with a length L. Okay, and width and the thickness. Okay, T here, remember, T if uh, we uh, use it to label in, uh, uh, we use it to label a most structure, it is actually referred as thickness. Okay, not time, not speed. Okay, it is thickness. Okay, the interconnect segment runs parallel to the chip surface and is separated by the is separated from the gray, uh, the ground uh, plan by a dielectric oxide layer of height h. Okay, so h is uh, defined as height. Okay, means uh, this distance. Okay, parallel plate capacitance happens when uh, the width is larger than the uh, the thickness. Okay, means this width is larger than the thickness. Okay, here the thickness TDI is actually the height. Okay, okay. Uh, the diagram show here with different uh, alphabet for the thickness and height is actually quite confusing. Okay, if you refer to the previous previous uh, diagram, okay, you see here this is height, H and T. Okay, but if you see here, you see the thickness here is H and then the T, the I here is height. Okay, uh, you must remember uh, the thickness here is actually referred to the thickness of that uh, silicon dioxide. Okay, but here, let me check again. Okay, not the thickness dio uh, silicon dioxide, is the thickness of the gate. Okay, thickness of the gate. Okay, so this one, if this is a gate, okay, so this one is the thickness, okay, but the alphabet that is used is H here. Okay. Okay, so under this condition, okay, it is assumed that the electric field line are orthogonal to the capacitance plate. Okay, uh, what is mean by here? Okay, you see here, this is the line, or the line here, okay, towards the body. Okay, uh, this is a uh, electrical field. Okay, this is the electric electrical field line. They are in octagonal. Okay, to the capacitance plate. Okay, since this is a gate, this is body, and this is a silicon dioxide. Okay, so in between gate to the body, there is actually a capacitance. Okay, there is a capacitance. This capacitance, we call it as a parallel plate capacitance. Okay. And then this capacitance is in octagonals uh, to the uh, electric field line. Okay, uh, this is the formula given. Okay, to determine the parallel plate capacitance is the same one with the one that I show you just now in ad, uh, the short additional notes. Okay. Uh, referring to figure 6.16 and figure 6.17, in interconnect lines where the wire thickness T is comparable in magnitude to the ground plane, ground plane, okay, ground plane distance H, fringing electric field significantly increase the total parasitic capacitance. Okay. Um, Okay, other than par parallel plate capacitance, there is another capacitance we call fringing capacitance. Okay, that is caused by uh that is uh, caused by this uh, fringing field. Okay, it will contribute to the total parasitic capacitance. Okay, remember the total parasitic capacitance 
is means that the unwanted capacitance. Okay. Uh, so here you see fig six, uh, figure 6.17. Okay, this is the influence of the fringing electric fields upon the parasitic wire capacitance. Okay, imagine that this is a wire. Okay, and then when this wire is uh, supplied with voltage, okay, then there is an electric field. Okay, electric field is not only in this way. Okay, but also at the side. Okay, at the side of the wire. Okay, so all these are called as fringing field. And then there is uh, some capacitance that is uh, induced okay, from this fringing field. Okay, and then parallel plate here, uh, the capacitance is determined by this. The capacitance in between the wire and the surface of the body or the wire and another wire, okay. Okay, fringing capacitance in modern process with our height ratios drop down significantly. It causes capacitance between side walls of wire and substrate called the fringing capacitance. Okay, it cannot longer be ignored. Okay, so the wire capacitance uh, is uh, the contributions uh, from this uh, parallel plate capacitance and the fringing capacitance. Okay, so this is uh, the formula for a wire capacitance. Okay, uh, there is a graph given here, okay, in figure 6.18. Okay, this graph is about the variations of the fringing field factors with the interconnect geometry. Okay, the interconnect geometry here is determined by this width over the height. Okay, uh, this one, um, the height here, I refer to this 6.16. Okay, I refer to here, 6.16 means this height. Okay, uh, not should not refer to this one okay should refer to this one is the height okay means the width over the height okay not the thickness okay so the fringing field you see here in this graph okay this is the fringing field effect the y-axis okay fringing field effect Okay, and then this is width over the length. Okay, and this is width over the height. Okay, so uh, width over height and width over length, they are part of the interconnect geometry. Okay, they indicate the interconnect geometry. So you can see here, uh, at different level of the width of height, okay, uh, they will cause different fringing field effect. Okay, uh, the drop uh, of this width over height means the smaller the width over height, the fringing field will be more significant. Okay, uh, the fringing field will be more significant. If the width over height is large, okay, is large, then the fringing effect will be smaller. Okay, this is how we should evaluate uh, from the graph. Okay, so uh, based on observation, the fringing field increases with the decreasing width over height ratio. And its capacitance can be as much as 10 to 20 times larger than the parallel plate capacitance. Okay, so if you compare the fringing field, the capacitance, Okay, since the graph already given here, this is uh, to evaluate the cap, uh, the fringing field, okay, what exists. Okay, we can estimate, do some estimate at this point and at this point. How much is the uh, uh, the the uh, the fringing effect, uh, fringing field effect? How uh, the factor, okay, how much they differ? Okay, uh, the submicron fabrication technology allows the width of the metal lines to be decreased rather significantly. 
but the thickness of the line must be preserved in order to ensure the structural integrity. Okay, so now all the transistor um, uh, fabricate okay, uh, from this submicron fabrication technology. Okay, so uh, the fringing effects uh, can significantly uh, reduce. Okay, um, but the thickness, okay, the thickness of the wire must be maintained. Okay, uh, here stated in order to ensure the structural integrity. Okay, narrow metals like uh, lines with a uh, considerable vertical thickness make these interconnection line especially especially vulnerable to fringing field effect. Okay, uh, next there is another figure 6.19. Okay, it shows a different view of the line capacitance and the functions of width over height and thickness over height. Okay, uh, so here uh, this is uh, the graph. Okay, the capacitance of a single interconnect as a function of width over height and the thickness over height. Okay, this is the capacitance. Okay, versus the width over height. Okay, uh, there are three lines here. Okay, uh, the line that indicate the capacitance when the thickness over the height is 1 and thickness over height is equals to 0 0.5. Okay, uh, and then uh, another line is for the parallel plate. Okay, this is the parallel plate capacitance. Okay, CPP parallel plate. Okay, this one you should know. Okay, the linear dash dot line represent the corresponding parallel plate capacitance, means this one. Okay, and the other two curves represent the actual capacitance taking into account the fringing field effect. Okay. So uh, here show these two is the fringing effect capacitance. Okay, the line here you see slightly vary here because uh, the thickness over the height is different, the value is different. Okay, um, again, uh, this um, graph shows you uh, that uh, the, when the width over height increase, Okay, and then the width of height increase, the fringing field will also increase. Okay, the fringing field effect will be more significant and then the capacitance will increase. Okay, and then uh, the parallel plate capacitance as well. Okay, parallel plate uh, capacitance will also increase when the width over the height increase. Okay, this is uh, how we, we should conclude uh, from the graph. Okay, uh, now it's about interwire capacitance. Okay, uh, the diagram here show you the uh, interwire capacitance with several wire here. Okay, assume that uh, you see here this is the wire all these are actually wire okay uh, wire can be uh, wire or metal layer they can be positions at different la level okay uh, lower level and higher level okay so here you see when this wire they are placed in this way okay so between wire and wire there is a capacitance okay this is also between wire and wire, there is a capacitance. Okay, uh, the capacitance from the side of the wire to another wire, we call it as a fringing capacitance. Okay, and then this one is the uh, parallel plate capacitance. Okay, so all these you see here are the parallel plate capacitance, fringing field capacitance, and also interwire capacitance. Okay, the formula is given here. Okay, uh, this is the uh, uh, 
uh, the final uh, capacitance okay, that we can use uh, to determine the wire capacitance okay, when we consider the inter-wire capacitance. Okay, this one is for the real case. Okay, it's for the real case. Okay, the total parasitic capacitance of the line is not only de increased by the fringing field effect, but also by the capacitive coupling between the line. The capacitance components associated with parallel interconnections line in two different configurations are depicted in figure 6.20. Uh, Note that the capacitive coupling between near bearing line is increased when the thickness of the wire is comparable to its wire. This coupling between the interconnect line is mainly responsible for signal crosstalk where the transitions in one line can cause noise in the other line. Okay, so this is about uh, the capacitive coupling between the neighboring lines that can cause noise. Okay, um, so I will show the figure 6.20. Okay, so there are two structures here, you see. Okay, uh, this structure, there is only the wire, uh, only one level like wire. Okay, one le one level wire. Okay, uh, uh, the wire is in adjacent to each other. Okay, so this is inter wire, and there is a fringing wire, and there is a capacitance plate, capacitance. Okay, another structure here you see, there are two level of metal layers. Okay, this is level one. This is level two. Okay, so there are two layers. So two layer of the metal wire. Okay, um, here uh, the capacitance also uh, have to consider. Okay, that include the parallel capacitance, fringing uh, field capacitance. Okay, so with this uh, figure, uh, this can uh, clearly show you okay, uh, what is all these capacitance in the most structures when they are uh, different layer of the metal wire use. Okay, uh, so uh, just now uh, mentions that when there are two uh, wire or more than two wire are connected, uh, not connected, are placed uh, adjacent to each other, they will have a capacitive coupling. Okay, that this uh, capacitive coupling will cause a signal crosstalk. Okay, crosstalk, this crosstalk will uh, actually induce the noise. Okay, okay, what is mean by the crosstalk? Okay, it will be mentioned further here. Okay, the crosstalk coupling. Okay, uh, crosstalk coupling represents the parasitic transient voltage induced by a switching interconnects on a neighboring interconnects. Crosstalk is the interference in a victim line signals transmissions caused by a switching activity on a aggressor line. Okay, uh, there are a few term a few terms here which is uh, quite new to you the victim line and the aggressor line okay uh, in a chip there are many interconnects line okay some lines uh, we call it as victim and some we call it as aggressor okay um so uh, between the lines uh, there will be interference okay uh, the interference is actually caused by the switching activity Okay, as integrations density of on-chip interconnect increases at every technology nodes, the crosstalk effect become more pronounced. Okay, this is means that if uh, the power density of the chip is increased, okay, not only power density but integration integrations density means the numbers of 
uh, the transistor in a chip increases. Okay, when the numbers of transistor in the chip increases, means the integration density increase, then the interconnect increase as well. Okay, so the crosstalk effect become more pronounced. Okay, it strongly depends on the values of the coupling capacitance, transitions, time skew, and the adjacent interconnect length. In order to keep the crosstalk minimum, the capacitance between the wire should not be too large. Okay. So, uh, so this one means that uh, uh, the three capacitance that I mentioned to you, okay, that can contribute to the total parasitic capacitance. Okay. So, if you want to have a high cap. Uh, if you want to avoid avoid to have a high parasitic capacitance, okay, the capacitance between the two wires should be small, okay. That also to make sure that the crosstalk is minimum. Okay, this is feasible by breaking a long interconnect by inserting an in intermediate buffer. Another approach of reducing the crosstalk is to use the shielding wire. Okay, uh, this is a figure uh, called 5.19. Okay, uh, that sh uh, shows the schematic of an equivalent circuit to model the crosstalk between the adjacent wire. Okay, uh, here you see um, this uh, is with a wire and the cap uh, not capacitor, a wire and the inverter. Okay, and at the output of the inverter, there is a resistance, inductance, and capacitance. Okay, so uh, there are three different lines here. Okay, uh, this line is act as an aggressor. This is a victim, and this is aggressor. Okay, uh, so what is mean by the aggressor and victim? So uh, if you want to know more, you can... Um, uh, Go to have uh, some reading, okay. What is mean by the aggressor and victim, okay? But uh, here uh, just uh, want to show you that uh, um, the line here, there are multiple multiple line here. When they, uh, they are placed close to each other, then uh, there will be some capacitive coupling that cause the signal cross talk. Okay, okay, so this is the end of uh, this. Um, there is another more. Okay, I have another lecture notes I have uploaded to you. Okay, that is part two. So I later I will continue after the break. So I uh, stop here.
Okay, now I will continue the lecture. Okay, uh, there is another lecture notes I have provided to you. Okay, uh, part 2. This is about uh, capacitance and RC delay modeling part 2. Okay, uh, in this uh, lecture notes, uh, uh, cover uh, more on uh, capacitance, not only uh, parallel plate capacitance and fringing capacitance. Okay, uh, there are other more capacitance. Okay, in the more structures. Okay, uh, just now I mentioned uh, all the capacitance, the three capacitance, the wire capacitance, parallel plate capacitance, and fringing cap capacitance. Uh, are all uh, between uh, wire, okay, wire and wire, okay, and then here there are other capacitance, okay, uh, uh, later I will explain more on uh, what are the other capacitance, okay, capacitance uh, also uh, we can categorize them as intrinsic capacitance and extrinsic capacitance, okay, uh, and uh, furthermore, uh, in this outline, as you see in part two, there are also wire delay modeling and lump and distributed RC equivalence models. Okay, uh, so this two is about uh, uh, how the delay, propagation delay is determined uh, through wire. Okay, uh, wire, they are... Uh, Characterized uh, based on RC. Okay, RC is the resistance and the capacitance. Okay, we can actually model that wire okay, to determine the wire delay okay, uh, with RC. Okay, this one also will be uh, covered later. Okay, uh, today uh, I uh, will not cover all because I think there will be too much uh, to you, okay, uh, to absorb, okay, uh, what uh, will be mentioned, okay. So I will only cover the parasitic capacitance, intrinsic capacitance, and extrinsic capacitance today, okay. Wire delay modeling and lump distributed RC equivalence delay, I will cover next week, okay. I see that uh, we still have time, okay. There are time, uh, more time uh, that I can cover, uh, slowly, okay, uh, uh, for the notes that I give you, okay. Uh, so, uh, if I am able to cover the parasitic capacitance, uh, intrinsic and extrinsic capacitance early, then um, again, uh, probably we can end the class early today also. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, when talk about the parasitic capacitance, uh, extrinsic and intrinsic capacitance, okay, it is actually uh, evaluate or um, mentions about uh, on the most, okay, mentioned uh, based on the most structures, okay. So the most structures are formed by the superimpositions of the numbers of conducting, insulating and transistor forming material. Okay, each of these layers have their own characteristic, like capacitance and resistance. These fundamental components are required to estimate the performance of the system. These layers also have inductant characteristics that are important for input-output behavior, but are usually neglected for on chips devices. Okay, uh, most structures, most of you know, okay, what is most structures, okay, it has a, a diffusion regions, gate, substrate, substrate is the body, okay, and then uh, the silicon dioxide, okay, so here in this slide, this is the most structure, okay, it means the most fat, okay, the structure of the most fat. Okay, with a uh, source and drain terminal and gate terminal. Okay, one of the important parallels of a MOS transistor is its capacitance. The MOSFET has 
two major categories of capacitance. Okay, here the capacitance means is the gate capacitance or channels capacitance. Okay, this capacitance is a capacitance caused by the insulating oxide layer under the gate. Okay, so means that this is the gate capacitance. Okay, this is gate Okay, the capacitance caused by the insulating oxide layer under the gate. Okay, means this one. This is gate channels capacitance. Okay, CGC is the gate channel capacitance. Sometimes we call it uh, gate capacitance or channels capacitance. Okay, gate cap capacitance is not only from the gate to the body. Okay, uh, but also get to the source. Okay, this is another capacitance from the gate to the source. Okay, get, this is gate and to the source. Okay, assume this is the source terminal since the label here given is a CGS. So this is the source terminal and this is the drain terminal. Okay, so the capacitance here also exists. Okay. Uh, capacitance between the gate and drain. We also call it as one of the gate capacitance. Okay, and then there is another capacitance we call junction capacitance. Okay, junction capacitance is a PN junction capacitance between the diffusions and the subtract. Okay, so uh, this refer to this one. Okay, these two capacitance, the source to the body capacitance. This is junction capacitance. Okay, why this is junction capacitance? Because uh, there is a PN junction here. Okay, you see this is a N plus, okay, N type region. This is a P type substrate. So two different type. So there is a diode. Okay, a diode, uh, the diode here is uh, from P to N. Okay, so this is a PN junction in between the N type and P type subtract. Okay, also there is another junction here. Okay, so this one is not uh, difficult to understand. Okay. Just now the diagram show you is a 3D view, okay, 3D side view, okay. Now this diagram is a 2D view. Okay, this a uh, 2D diagram is a schematic diagram, okay. Uh, shows uh, for a transistor, okay, uh, with a gate, drain, and source, okay. So uh, all these uh, transistor. Uh, not transistor, all these capacitance, okay, all these capacitance are similar to the one that show for this one, okay, uh, except that in this diagram, we show in, in 2D, okay, in 2D diagram, okay, uh, the capacitance here are all are included, okay, get to drain capacitance, get to the source capacitance, okay, and then the, uh, what else? The gate to the body is not sure here. Oh, okay. Sorry, it's, it's here. Okay. This is uh, the gate to the body. Okay. So these three are uh, gate capacitance. Okay. And then for junction capacitance, okay, this is a source to the subtract and drain to the subtract. Okay, so these two are the junction capacitance. Okay, these two are junction capacitance.
Okay. Uh, when we include the resistant, okay, uh, in the MOSFET, okay, this is how the diagram should look like, okay, uh, with the combinations of the resistant and capacitance. Okay, uh, so this is the diagram, a 2D diagram also, okay, uh, with gate, source, and drain terminal. Okay, so at the gate here, there is a resistance. Okay, this is the resist, uh, resistance. And then this is a capacitance. Uh, this is gap capacitance. Okay, there are uh, the three capacitance here indicate the gap cap capacitance. Okay, and then here, resistance here is not only on the gate, it's also at the, uh, at the source terminals and the drain terminal. Okay, and then this is a diode. Diode here indicate the junction capacitance, the PN junction capacitance. Okay. Okay, um, this diagram um, didn't show all the capacitance uh, for the fringing effect capacitance and parallel plate capacitance. Okay, it only show on the MOSFET. Okay, if we uh, put in the uh, capacitance of the wire and the parallel plate and the fringing capacitance, then uh, di the diagram will be look will look more complex. Okay, but it does not show here. Okay, but uh, if you understand what have been covered, uh, then you will know. Okay, how they should look like. Okay, let's look at a CMOS inverter with all its parasitic capacitance. Okay, uh, here uh, a diagram is given. Okay, it is a CMOS inverter with two transistors, one PMOS and one NMOS. Okay, and with all its uh, parasitic capacitance. Okay, uh, again, this parasitic capacitance uh, uh, means the gate capacitance um, and then uh, the wire capacitance. Okay, okay. so in this slide, uh, the capacitance, all these capacitance, they are classified as input capacitance and output capacitance. Okay, if we look this uh, CMOS circuit, okay, CMOS inverter circuit, they are input and output. Okay, uh, some of the capacitance, okay, uh, we can categorize them as input capacitance and some we categorize it as output capacitance. Okay, uh, so here already mentioned, okay, so considering the gates of the transistor are the input to the inverter, any capacitor touching the gate should be considered the input capacitance. Okay, and then considering the drains of the transistor are connected to the inverter output, any capacitance touching the drain should be considered output capacitance. Okay, so this is again uh, not difficult to understand. So now you know there is a gate capacitance or uh, junction capacitance. Okay, so how you we should know which one is input capacitance and output capacitance. Okay, uh, it's actually through the gate and drain. Okay, some capacitance is connected to the gate, then it is called as input capacitance, and some is to the uh, connected uh, to the drain terminal, then it is called output capacitance. Okay, the gate capacitance include the gate to the channels capacitance. Okay, and also the gate overlap capacitance. Okay. Get to channel capacitance, uh, just now already show you, it is a CGC capacitance. Okay, CGC is a get to channel capacitance. It is the main capacitance that is dependent on the regions of operations. Okay, in general, this is the formula. Okay, this formula is the one that show you just now. Okay, it's uh, the same one. Okay, and the gate overlap capacitance, okay, this is uh, refers to as the CGDO and CGSO. Okay, this is defined as the gate to the drain overlap capacitance. Okay, means from the gate to the drain and this is gate to the source. 
capacitance. Okay, uh, these two capacitance already mentioned just now. Okay, part of uh, the gate capacitance or input capacitance. Okay, uh, these two um, term here. Okay, uh, there is an O here. O here is actually means the overlap. Okay, what is mean by the overlap here? Okay, uh, this one you have to refer back to this diagram. Okay, uh, the term used here is a CGS. Okay, but it can also call as CGSO. Okay, overlap here means you see the gate and the source here, this region. Okay, I change the color. Okay, you see this region here. Okay, gate and the source terminals, they are overlap. Okay, the region, not terminals. The gate and the source regions, they are overlap. Okay, so this overlapping region, they are uh, gate to source capacitance. Okay, so here, uh, this capacitance, we can label it as CGSO as well. Okay, this one also. This one, we can label it as CGDO. Okay, means the overlapping between the gate and the drain region. Okay, get overlap capacitance is a constant. Okay, constant and small capacitance caused by the gate overlap of the diffusions. Okay, so this is the formula. Okay, and uh, here there are uh, more diagram here show with the gate capacitance, okay, uh, with the MOSFET under different operating mode. Okay, when the input voltage is uh, below zero and above zero and above the threshold uh, voltage, then uh, you will see here inside this body here, uh, the how, how this uh, MOSFET uh, uh, looks like. Okay, uh, when the input voltage, okay, is increased to zero, okay, or uh, this uh, values here, maybe uh, higher than the threshold voltage, okay, uh, there is a channel, okay, here this is a channel, Okay, channels and then uh, with the channels here, then the currents can flow through. Okay, uh, and this one is the inversion, inversion uh, phenomenon. Okay, we call this as inversion region. The inversion region refer to this, this whole thing. Okay, refer to this whole thing, not just that. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, okay, I hope I didn't remember wrongly for this one. But I remember this is inversion, but the regions is refers to, I don't know the whole thing is this or this one, but this is uh, uh, the phenomenon of inversions. Okay. Okay, uh, capacitance depends on the bias, uh, fringing field are present and um, account for the overlap C. Okay, gate capacitance uh, determines the amount of charge to switch the gate. Okay, several distributed components, large discontinuity as device turns on. At saturations, capacitance is entirely between gate and source. Okay, so this is another formula that can determine the gate to source and gate to drain the capacitance. Okay, now it's about junction capacitance. Junction capacitance is the diffusion capacitance of the MOSFET. It is measured according to the fabrication parameter. Okay, uh, so uh, here shows the formulas of how to determine the diffusion capacitance. Okay, uh, by measuring uh, the area, area and parameters of the diffusion region. 
okay, and with uh, the junction capacitance. Okay, this one I will not explain more, okay, uh, just uh, for your information only. Okay, uh, now it's intrinsic and extrinsic capacitance. Okay, just now uh, only mentions input, uh, not input. Uh, okay, input output capacitance, gate capacitance, and junction capacitance. Okay, if you can understand, uh, then you know how to uh, 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 which one is input and which one is output. Okay, on uh, input and output capacitance. Okay, uh, for the gate and junction capacitance. Okay, now it's intrinsic and extrinsic capacitance. This capacitance uh, will uh, cover on uh, uh, up will cover the output capacitance and input capacitance. Okay, for example, output capacitance. Okay, um, there is a wire and others. Okay, we have to consider there are others more capacitance. Okay, uh, maybe okay, I should just refer to this diagram for you to understand. Okay, we have to differentiate between output capacitance and load capacitance. Output capacitance is called as intrinsic capacitance and load capacitance, we call it as extrinsic capacitance. Okay, how to differentiate this? Okay, uh, uh, the next few slides will uh, show what is mean by this output and load capacitance. Okay, um, According to the diagram here, okay, the load capacitance can be determined. Okay, the load capacitance here is determined by is determined based on this output capacitance. Okay, this is output, this is wire, and this is input capacitance. Okay. Uh, again, uh, I repeat. Um Root capacitance here is not only take the output capacitance into consideration, but also the wire capacitance and the input capacitance. This input capacitance is the input capacitance of the uh, of the next uh, inverter. Okay, of the next inverter. Okay, if refer to this diagram, you you can see. Okay, there is a output capacitance. This is output capacitance. Okay, at the output of the first inverter. Okay, and then uh, here in between the inverter, there are a wire. Okay, so the wire also cause some capacitance. Okay, so it is a uh, draw here with a capacitance okay and then uh, this is the input capacitance input capacitance of this second inverter okay this second inverter we call it as load okay it is functions as a load okay so the load capacitance means the load that is being drive or connected to this driver okay uh, is load capacitance, we should take all this, okay, into consideration, okay, uh, this is load, okay, already mentioned, this is load, the second inverter, first inverter, it is called as driver, okay, or driving transistor. Okay, so this one, okay, load capacitance here, okay, is an intrinsic capacitance. Okay, intrinsic capacitance. Okay, okay. just now it's about intrinsic uh, extrinsic capacitance now is about intrinsic capacitance okay intrinsic capacitance is output capacitance okay uh 
what makes up the intrinsic output capacity of the driver. Okay, uh, it is actually primarily makes up of the diffusion capacitance. Okay, both drain to body capacitance have the terminals with a constant voltage and the others connected to the output. For a simple computation, we will replace them with an equivalence capacitance to ground. Okay, these capacitance are very non-linear and we will not go into the calculations in this course. Okay, so based on the statement here, uh, we know that intrinsic capacitance is actually the diffusion capacitance. Okay, uh, you see here uh, the diagram. Okay, this is also a CMOS inverter. Uh, this CMOS inverter uh, at the PMOS here, they are drained to the body capacitance. Okay, drain to the body capacitance. And also here, the NMOS, there is a drain to body capacitance. <coughs> okay, uh, so uh, output, okay, we all know output is, con uh, is connected at the drain terminals, right? Okay, output is connected at the drain terminal. Okay, so all the capacitance that uh, that are at the drain terminals, we call it as output capacitance, okay, or intrinsic capacitance. Okay, milli effect. Uh, milli effect, uh, it, what is mean by this milli effect? Okay, uh, uh, here a simple uh, diagram is short here, okay, with uh, statements, okay. A capacitor's experiencing identical but opposite voltage swing at both its terminals can be replaced by a capacitor to ground whose value is twice the original's value. Okay, uh, the statements here means that, okay, we refer to this diagram, okay, these two diagram of milli effect. Okay, uh, initially in this diagram, there is a gate to drain capacitance here. Okay, this is the capacitance mentioned. Okay, at the gate. Okay, uh, this uh, capacitance can, can be uh, draw at the output. Okay, with the capacitors connected to ground. Okay, and then the value is twice. Okay, means that you see here, this is another diagram. Okay, uh, with the capacitor connected at the output to the ground and the value is twice than that of the gate to the drain capacitance. Means that if we have a diagram like this, a capacitance connected to the uh, drain terminals of the transistor, okay, then we can redraw it in this way. Okay, and then uh, the capacitor, this capacitor at the input, okay, can be replaced with this capacitor at the output with twice of its original values. We call this as a milli effect. Okay. Um, okay, why we need uh, to know milli effect? Okay, this one uh, you... Uh, have to read yourself, okay, to know more, okay. Um, but uh, what I want to uh, mention here is to show you what is milli effect, uh, and um, this is the explanation, okay. Okay, extrinsic capacitance. So extrinsic capacitance is about load capacitance, okay. Just now mentioned. Okay, load capacitance, we take into consideration of the wire capacitance, get capacitance of the load, and the uh, output capacitance. Okay, um, so this is another diagram. Uh, and this is also the same one, actually, uh, with two CMOS inverter. Okay, except that here in this diagram, uh, it shows uh, in different form. Okay, uh, the capacitance, the wire capacitance, and also the input capacitance. 
Okay, input capacitance here is input uh, capacitance at the uh, second inverter, which is the load. Okay, uh, the input capacitance here is actually the gate capacitance of the PMOS and then the gate capacitance of the NMOS. Okay, so uh, a formula here is given. Okay, this formula is actually the gate capacitance of the load. Okay, uh, second inverter means the load. Okay, uh, this is the approximations. Okay, the approximations of the capacitance. Okay, and this is derived uh, with, we, we can actually rewrite it. Okay, with this formula, C or X multiply the width over length. We can relate, okay, to get uh, the uh, gate capacitance. Okay, uh, approximations of parasitic capacitance. Okay, uh, and a very general approximation is given here. Okay, uh, this approximation is for the load for the load capacitance, okay, the load capacitance uh, comprise the wire capacitance, okay, output capacitance and the gate capacitance, okay, so output capacitance just now mentioned, okay, okay, I rewrite, rewrite here again, C, load is CL plus C wire plus C input. Okay, input of the gate. Okay, and then this formula lists up all the capacitance for all these three. Okay, C wire here is a CW. Okay, it is a CW. Okay, and then the C out and C in. Okay, C out here is a uh, output capacitance. Output capacitance means the capacitance that is connected at the output, mean the drain terminal. Okay, uh, so here you see this is the drain to the body of the PMOS and drain to the body of NMOS. Okay, so this is actually the output capacitance. Okay, this is the output capacitance. And then the load here, this is the gate capacitance of the PMOS and MOS. This is actually the C in load, the input capacitance of the load. Okay, and then this one milli, milli effect. Okay, th this is uh, the capacitance after we, uh, the milli effect, okay? If we don't want to consider this milli effect, we can eliminate, okay? But if uh, after the milli effect is applied, Okay, uh, this capacitance, we have to consider this capacitance from the input capacitance of the driver. Okay, so that's why you see here there is a get to drain capacitance of the PMOS and NMOS and multiply with two. <coughs> okay, so um, this is uh, with a melee effect. If without melee effect, so there will be only this three capacitance okay for a load capacitance okay an even more general approximations with n fans out gate give us uh c load equals to c out plus c wire plus n multiply c in okay n here means the numbers of the uh, load okay numbers of the load Okay, the load here is mean by the fan sub gate. Okay, load is driven by a driving transistor. Okay, so load can be more than one. Okay, the load can be the CMOS inverter as the load. Okay, a uh, CMOS inverter is a gate. Okay, so uh, they can be N number. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is all about uh, the parasitic capacitance. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, all the notes 
that cover for capacitance. Okay, so I will stop here today. Uh, the wire modeling with delay this one, I will cover next week. Okay, I... Uh, okay, Wei Hong, you have question about assignment. Yes, you can ask question. What is the question? Okay. Uh, the comparison should be made on 4 to 2 and 6 to 2. Okay. I, uh, okay. I actually um, want you all to investigate uh, two different width for BMOS and MMOS. Okay. Uh, normally, the PMOS, the width will be larger than the MMOS, right? Okay. Uh, PMOS, the width will be larger than the MMOS by a factor of two to three. Okay. There is a reason behind that. Some of you, you know. Okay. I want you to do investigations by making the width with different factor and see what is the effect on the output. Okay, uh, for your uh, question here, you ask, uh, and then you ask with uh, the comparison, which comparison to make, 4 to 2 and 6 to 2. Uh, I, I want to verify, 4 to 2 here means the P most is 4 and most is 2, right? Uh, okay, so if... Uh, uh, like that, uh, the comparison should be 4 to 2 and 6 to 2. Okay. Okay, I hope everyone clear. Okay, I know some of you, you ask, you have question. Okay, you come and ask me uh, about the task 2. Uh, for the width uh, of the PMOS and MOS invest investigation, you all need to provide the stimulation, okay? The output stimulation, okay? And then there is also another parameter I also ask you to vary and then to check and discuss, okay? The parameter is the root capacitance, okay? It's the root capacitance I ask you to vary. So you all uh, have to uh, change the root capacitance and see uh, what happened. Okay, and then to uh, this one, okay, if uh, oh, this one also you need to provide the output, okay, the output from simulation, okay. Uh, I missed out just now, okay, uh, about the width of the transistors, okay. I ask you all to relate the width of the transistor to the switching frequency, right? Okay, uh, if you cannot prove with the any output, 
on the switching frequency, it is okay. You can base on discussion. Okay, I expect it's only discussion. Or it's only with discussions, okay, without any output to prove. Okay, um, but you all have to do some studies, uh, read a journal or articles uh, to know, okay, what are the effects. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think everybody uh, clear of that. Okay. Assignment, the deadline is next week. Okay. Uh, so you still have time to do it. Okay. Uh, the attendance, no issue. Okay. Uh, we can end the class now. Okay. I will see you again on Monday. Thank you.